I had never been a favourite. I'm just ready to leave, get me out of here. I was determined as Hi guys, welcome back. Um, today I wanted to sit down and record a little video about my experience at dance college. Um, in case you don't know, which you probably don't, I am a professional dancer, singer and actress. Um, I worked in the West End for the past two years and before that I was doing tours and cruise ships dancing. Recently I filmed an advert, so I've done quite a bit of work. I've been working for around five years now, which is mental. Um, and I wanted to talk to you about my experience at one of the top dance colleges or musical theatre colleges in or around London, in England, really. Um, I won't be naming names just because I don't think it's very professional, but you could figure it out if you wanted to. Um, and it's a mixed bunch of feelings I have about my experience there. So, where shall I start? I started dancing when I was two, so I've been dancing for a long time. <laughs> I'm 24 now. Um, I knew I wanted to be a dancer for as long as I can remember. That is the one thing that I wanted to do. I wanted to be on stage dancing. It was my passion for, yeah, since, since I started. Um, so I went to my local dance school um, and I was doing dance competitions so I really enjoyed being on stage and I knew that and I decided when I was 15 um, to start applying for some dance colleges. At this time in my life I was really ill. Um, I was in hospital for a lot of the time um, by the time I was 16, I had had seven operations on my kidneys. Uh, I can go into that in another video, just because it's really long, but basically I've got kidney disease, which causes kidney stones. So I was really, really suffering with that during this period, meaning I was hardly in school. I got like three pretty average GCSEs and that's it, because I was not studying, I was not in school um, and I was really kind of bed bound <laughs> at the time. So this experience, yeah, was is probably different to quite a lot of people <laughs> who were auditioning for dance colleges at the time. Anyway, I applied and I was kind of going from hospital to dance audition, <laughs> back to hospital kind of thing. Um, just when I was, I think I was almost 16 at this point, no, it would have been in around June, maybe before that, May, so I was 15 at the time. Um, or was I 16 at the time? 16 at the time, yeah, I was 16. Um, and so I auditioned for, I think five or six dance colleges. The one I ended up going to was the one that I got the scholarship for because <laughs> I could not be affording or more like my parents could not be affording to send me to dance college because it is expensive. I think it's like 10 grand or something. And no, I don't come from a family with money. We just did, there was no chance. So the only way that I was going to be getting into dance college was with DADA, which is a dance and drama award. I got into all of the uh, uh, colleges that I was auditioning for. The one that I ended up going to, I got into. So I got the letter through and I read it and I was over the moon about getting in. And they said, um, the awards for the scholarships will be sent in the post to whoever's got them. So just keep an eye out. And then about a week later, I got a letter through the post saying that I'd been awarded with a scholarship. And I looked at the letter and I was, I think I cried, I was so happy. My mum was asleep at the time, so I ran upstairs to tell my mum. I was like, mum, I've got a dada, I can't believe it. I'm going to dance college, this is amazing. Bearing in mind, when I'd auditioned for the college that I went to, I was really ill. <laughs> I think I come out of hospital two weeks before, being bed bound in hospital, and then I had to do this really, really intense dance audition, and I hadn't danced for a while. And I remember in the audition, one of the ballet teachers said, um, out of breath already, are you? And I just replied, yeah, <laughs> because he had no idea what I'd been going through. Um, 
so I yeah I managed to bag myself a scholarship my mum didn't believe it she looked at the letter and was like let's call them up uh, let's call them up before we get excited about this because you know they might have made a mistake kind of thing I was like thanks mum but I managed to get it uh, I don't know the stars aligned at that time and I guess they saw potential in me even though I didn't do a good audition and I was really unfit at the time they didn't know any of the stuff that I've been going through so I don't know how this managed to work out but it did over the summer I was in hospital again then two weeks or like three weeks before I moved away to go to dance college I came out of hospital so you can imagine my mum was not very confident with me going away i was on all of the painkillers under the sun at the time i was on morphine i had been on morphine for a good four months i think maybe more um and i was about to move out of house at the age of 16 to go to dance college so the day came for me to move as i was 16 i wasn't going to be staying in any kind of halls or like accommodation like that we stayed with a landlady um, so I was actually with one of my friends that I knew from competitions and we got a landlady together So we moved all of our stuff up there settled in and got ready to start college um, On the Monday, I think we moved in on the Friday got to know the place a little bit um, And then started first year first year was tough <laughs> I mean honestly a bit of a failure for me because I was still ill. I was still so ill uh, I was in agony every single day. I was on morphine every single day. I would take morphine to college with me and be going just before ballet class, I'd take some morphine to help with my pain from my kidney stones. Um, none of the teachers understood what I was going through. I don't really think any of them actually asked or cared. Um, I think they maybe thought I was putting it on or didn't think it was as serious as it is. Um, halfway through first year I was admitted back into hospital again for three weeks I think so I missed about a month of college in one chunk bearing in mind like before that I'd been dancing maybe half of the classes after that I think I had my last operation then which was my seventh operation when I was 16 um, or 17 and at dance college uh, and it was just tough. I was falling behind. I wanted to quit because I didn't think I was going to be able to carry on like this. Um, I was in too much pain. Um, I missed all of my assessments, all of the deadlines that I needed to do. I was really, really down. I felt like I had not really any friends other than the ones that I was living with because I was just not attending college enough. I was sat out of all of the classes. Um, there was one teacher that I think really like believed in me. And I remember I was doing a ballet class. I did just the bar because I was so unfit and so in so much pain. And I came away from the bar and sat down ready to watch and write notes in the class, which is what you do when you're injured or ill. And he looked at me and he said, wow, you're really sweating and breathing hard. I was like, yeah, he's like, I can tell you're working hard. Keep going, like, well done. And that to me was just like, oh, somebody can see that I'm not putting it on, that I am really ill and I'm really, really trying to keep going with this. And just that one comment really spurred me on. I get a little bit emotional just thinking about it um, because I really hadn't had the support that I needed. First year went by, uh, I had not progressed whatsoever. I had had a really tough time. Um, I enjoyed the college and I loved being able to dance and dancing every day, but that is just not what I was doing because I was so ill and I was in so much pain and I was in and out of hospital. So the summer went by and my kidneys started to get a bit better. Um, I think I'd had my final operation, which was the sixth one um of that time and i was ready to go for second year i was like this is my year like i'm gonna really i need to do so much catching up because everyone's improved so much in first year and i've kind of got worse <laughs> worse than when i went in there 
Um, so I decided this was the year that I really needed to work hard. I went in as a dancer um, and the college that I went to was primarily dancing with singing and acting as well because it was a musical theatre college but it really specialised in dancing and second year my dancing really took off. I think I improved a lot in second year mainly because I was just doing classes <laughs> like obviously you're going to improve if you're actually able to do the classes and so it got around to assessment time I was ready I had done my first year assessments late in my second year like other people had as well because there'd been a lot of injured people and you know other ill people and stuff and so second year assessments had come around and I was ready to go and a week before my second year assessments I was in a lot of pain with my kidneys it was fine I could manage it um, I had filled up a hot water bottle to put on my stomach because it just helps having the heat um, and in my tired drained state I spilt the entire kettle onto my leg onto the top of my thigh um, and got second degree burns all over my thigh I had blisters on my inner thigh it was a patch about let me put my tea down about this big just completely burnt and blistered and raw so I couldn't do the assessments because now I had uh, a big like patch of raw skin on my leg I couldn't dance with that and again so I was like this is really not the best timing um I went to college and was giving people a note saying that I've burnt my leg and I had I remember I had da uh, had like dance leggings on when I was telling people or telling the teachers and they kind of weren't they were just like okay like I could tell they weren't having any of it really but they were kind of sick of it because there were a lot of people off injured and ill all the time and then one day I went to college when it was a little bit more healed I took the um like dressing off so let it just get some air and I wore some shorts because it was summertime and everybody saw my burn and that's when they realised that again <laughs> I wasn't exaggerating it was actually really fucking bad I missed the second year assessments um, obviously the burn healed and my kidneys were doing much much better and so I managed to do my second year assessments a couple of weeks after um, my dressing had healed uh, my wound had healed um, and that all went really well End of second year, I remember a teacher telling me, um, like, it wasn't really a teacher that I really got on with very well, but she kind of, just as an off comment, said, you know, you've improved a lot since first year. And I was like, oh, it doesn't take much. <laughs> it doesn't take much to please me. I just need a little bit of recognition every now and then, and I am flying high. So with that comment, I was like, oh, I'm really, really doing so much better than... I was and I can see that I've improved and I'm feeling really good and I feel like much more part of the college now um, and second year was just really really fun everyone had got to know each other we all had our friend groups but we all mixed around together as well there were lots of parties um, I was 18 so I could finally go out and drink and that was fun not that there was that much of that but there was a bit um, and by the end of second year, I decided it's time to leave my landlady's house. I want to be living by myself now. I'm 18. Um, and I decided to move in with my friends um, into a house around the corner from the college. Third year started. I had a great summer off and I was raring to go for third year. I was ready to like bash this year out and then get into the industry. Like I'm ready to be working now. I don't like education, I never have, I never will. You know, dance college for me was much better than school, but still having that very strict regimen, I'm just not that good with it. <laughs> I really like having my freedom, and if anything prohibits that, I kind of get a little bit rebel-like with it, I don't know. Um, so I was ready to, yeah, bash out third year, get myself an agent, hopefully, and leave and get a job. Third year started, third year was a really tough year. Um, for anyone watching this that's going to dance college, you'll know third year is definitely the hardest, um, for me anyway, but also the funnest. It was, I had the best time in third year. 
one, because I wasn't feeling anything wrong with my kidneys whatsoever. I was perfectly healthy the whole year. That, I mean, in itself makes a massive difference to my experience, just being well and being able to do everything. Um, I felt like I had a really great, great group of friends at my house. I was having a really fun time. Um, I was staying at where the college was more. I wasn't really coming home so often and that was good for me because I really liked having my own time and feeling like an adult and I was just having a great time, but it was very demanding third year. Um, I remember we, for our agent showcase, we had to make up our own dances or musical theatre pieces. Um, and I remember being like, I don't think I'm gonna get an agent because I can't sing. <laughs> I can sing. I was just always so incredibly unconfident in singing. Um, and the thing is with my college was that you went as a dancer and if you didn't put yourself forward in the singing classes, that's it, you're not really gonna improve as a singer. And I was always way too embarrassed and just nervous. Um, and so I'd wait until the end of every singing class and then it it would be the end of the class and I wouldn't have to sing. And I'd be like, oh, okay, off to dance class then. You know, not improving my singing whatsoever. We had a couple of acting classes a week, but really not anything. I'd never said any words out loud, any script. I'd never sung alone, you know, I was just a dancer. So I thought that agents wouldn't really want to hire a dancer because I'm not a commercial dancer and I'm not musical theatre because I don't like to sing. So I don't think I'm going to get an agent. Um, agent showcase rolled around. I had helped choreograph this dance that I was in um, and we all pitched together and there was lots of other people doing their own little bits as well and I remember our um the head of the school saying you know you're not going to be getting an agent if you're not singing in your agent showcase agents are not going to hire just dancers and so I was like yeah I kind of know <laughs> I know that it's fine um I just hope that someone will see something in me uh and then we did the show and within the next couple of days, I'd received 14 agent offers. So I was like, and I hadn't even, you know, showed myself to my best ability, I don't think. I didn't think I did a good performance. Um, and I danced well, but as I said, I didn't think I was gonna get any offers. And to get 14 was like a massive confidence boost for me because all throughout college, I had never been a favorite. All throughout everything that I've done, I've never been a favourite. Um, school, dance college, dance school, um, never a favourite. And especially dance college, I didn't even get a look in for anything. Um, I was never given a chance. I was never put up for any of the cool numbers in the show. Um, actually, I, I did my agent showcase before my third year show and I got these agent offers and I was over the moon and I accepted one of them and I was just like really feeling positive and I was like wow they see something in me and then I did my third year show and I think everyone was in like an average of maybe seven eight pieces I was put into three um so yeah they just did not see anything in me whatsoever I don't think they um thought I was gonna do very well in the industry I don't know why, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. I uh, was always pretty chilled. I'm never one to push it into the front of the class. I'm always a very chilled out person, but I have so much passion uh, and I don't think they ever really, yeah, believed in me at all. Um, so third year show comes and goes. I'm hardly in any numbers. I'm just ready to leave, get me out of here. It seems that people on the outside world maybe believe in me a bit more than college does. So I'm ready to give it a go. And bearing in mind, my self-confidence is pretty low at this time in my life. Like, I didn't think I was good. Um, I never thought I was good. I never think I'm good, <laughs> even now, which is a problem. Um, but I was ready to give it a shot. I was determined as fuck. So, you know, I can just try and try and try again. And bearing in mind, I had no backup option whatsoever. This was my one and only option, is to be a dancer, to be a performer of some sort. 
um, there was no backup. So I had no other choice, you know? And I think that is part of the reason why I was so determined because I was just like, well, what else are you going to do? This is your only passion. This is what you've always wanted to do. You're going to do it. <laughs> That's it. Um, so I left college, graduated, got my diploma, national diploma in dance and musical theatre. Um, had a really great last couple of months at college. We had an amazing grad ball. All our friends there. It's a, yeah, a fantastic time. And I was ready to get out into the world. I'd started auditioning. Um, and I'd got down for like a couple of cruise jobs, but I'd never got any. And then in September, I auditioned for um, a pantomime and I got it. And that was my first job. And I was so excited. I realised once I left college that actually it had been good for me being beaten down for all of, all of those years because I came out um, more determined than ever and also not thinking that I was the best and that I was going to get a job straight away and so the fact that I was going to these auditions and not getting the job was not a surprise to me it was fine I knew that was going to happen but when I did get a job I was so overly happy with getting any job whatsoever that 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 was the best thing that could have possibly happened to me I didn't ever feel the need to give up when I didn't get a job in an audition straight away because I think, because I was never a favourite, um, I didn't have that kind of expectation of coming into the real world and everything being easy because it's just not. Um, it's not easy and life's not easy, but I did it and I made it through college and I came out the other end and I got myself a job and then I got another job and then another job and then I landed myself uh, a job in the West End for two years and I'll speak more about that if you'd like to hear it in another video about my other jobs that I've had. Um, I'm now five years graduated and my career is going well and I, I'm i never gonna think I'm the best because I'm not but I'm proud of where I've come and how far I've come and I think college in the end no matter how hard it was it helped me with that. That was pretty much my entire college experience. I think I mentioned everything that I needed to. If you're going to dance college or in dance college or musical theatre or acting college, good luck. Um, you need to remember that just because you're not the favourite now, it doesn't mean that you'll never be and it also doesn't mean anything in terms of your career. There were plenty of people at my college that, the, that were the favourites and that gave up as soon as they left and they didn't get a job because they're just not used to the letdown. And actually not being a favourite ended up being a benefit to me because it gave me a thicker skin. And if you need anything in this industry, it is thick skin. So I hope this is an interesting story for you. And I hope you're having a good time if you are at college. Or I hope this was informative if you didn't know anything about the dance and musical theatre world. Um, I graduated at 19 and I've been doing pretty good since. So I'm really happy. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching and I will speak to you later.